we have a file set up for animation and let's do a simple walk cycle with man candy which is a important type of animation since walk cycles are often needed in animations or in games and it's also a little bit challenging because you have to do quite a few steps to get the walk to behave the way you want and finally um, you would want to take that walk cycle which is usually one step or the two steps left and right and put it cycling forward so the character moves around and then place that on a path so you can have the character walk around corners and up and down hills and so on and so forth and that's quite a few steps now the first thing to think about is just concentrate on the one step the one primary unit of animation that you're going to repeat in your cycle and it's good to think of animations as being broken down between some key or important poses that the character takes that are either extreme poses or storytelling poses etc and for a walk there aren't that many of them and it's pretty easy to plan the walk as taking place between two contact positions now that contact is when the front foot first hits the ground the heel first strikes the ground that's a contact position and between those two contacts um, you have a passing position in the middle where the character is pivoting over the foot that's on the ground and between the first contact and the passing position you can think that there's a down position where the character is at his lowest because uh, the weight is now settled on the front foot and then between the pass position and the last contact there's an up position which is the highest position in the cycle and that takes place because the character is pushing off the back leg and getting that power and strength to the walk that will enable the back foot to continue swinging forward and land forward and so that's our up position so once you have those uh, poses created um, you can then start refining your animation by adding uh, further in between poses um, and by limbering up the character so that everything doesn't move at the same time um, the arms don't necessarily move at the same speed as the legs and even within the arm itself you might have the hand trailing the forearm trailing the the bicep or upper arm and trailing the shoulder so that the whole hand is swinging a lot more limber and loose than something that's moving as one big chunk. So before we start, let's save the file. And now that we have that saved, we'll start doing our action. Now just a quick primer on the viewport, you can use the numpad key on your uh, keyboard, if you're on a desktop computer at least. 3 is side view, 1 is front, 7 is top, and shift clicking them does the opposite side, so you get the right view, the back, and the bottom, etc. You can use the middle mouse button to kind of freely change the, the view, and you can actually access everything in the menu here. So now that we've done that, let's do a rig, and we'll see that we're seeing quite a bit more than we'll actually end up animating in the walk. We're not going to animate his face, so we can toggle the layers off by shift-clicking them, and shift-click on the face layers, for instance. Now, the fingers we're not going to animate, at least not at first, so let's shift-click on those layers. And finally, we're animating the arms in FK. We're not going to use the IK layers, so let's shift click on those too. And that's a little bit more reasonable, a lot more easy to work with to deal with those keys. Now, if you happen to click on a layer, then you hide all the other ones, but then you can simply shift click on the ones that you want to reveal again. So let's start with the first contact. Now, Pay attention when you're doing the contact positions. Um, a wrinkle to doing this in CG as opposed to on paper is that the torso and the feet are kind of important. First we'll click the rep record button 
Let's click the record button here that we have auto keyframing set up so that we won't have to hit the I key all the time. Now, uh, let's be, pay attention to those feet. Because they're going to have to forward cycle, they have to be backwards and forwards symmetrical. And we'd rather put them on, on uh, easily uh, understood offsets. So instead of having them at point 0.654, having them at 0.2 or 0.3 or 1 is an easier number to keep track of for a cycle. And the trick to do that is just to hold down the control key while we're moving the foot. So you would hit the G key and then hit control while you're moving the foot and you'll see that the foot is moving uh, on the grid on easily repeatable offsets. And you only have to do this for the torso and the feet because those are the bones that will actually be translating forward when the walk cycle goes forward. So you'll see now it's going on integer, integer uh, or not integer but on repeatable grid points. So we move it by a unit of one forward and you can still while control is hit hit the middle mouse button to constrain it to the Y axis for instance. And so here it is forward by one unit on Y and now we have a keyframe. We'll right click on the right foot hit G and hold down the control key and move it backwards by the same distance we move the front foot forward unit of one and then click and now we have a keyframe for the back foot. Now let's go to the torso let's see if you want to lower it down a little bit because it looks a little bit stretched I'm going to hold control down when I'm moving the torso as well as the feet though that is more important when you're moving it forward but it's just playing it safe a little bit now we have to have the heel striking in the contact position so we can hit R and rotate like this or we can turn on our manipulators put them in rotate mode and in normal mode that way it'll be rotating the bone aligned to the normal axis which in this case is the axis of each individual bone and so you can see it changes attitude when you rotate and now we keyed that now it looks like the knees are too bent so we'll grab the torso and move it back up again sorry there we go and maybe a bit more and then click and that will change the keyframe for the torso. So now we have our contact for the feet, but we can tweak it a little bit more and make it look a little bit nicer. And as we work, it's always good to look in different viewpoints. So here's the front view. Everything looks very symmetrical and straight, which is not quite realistic. So for instance, I'll try rotating the hip so that the forward legs hip is also a little bit forward which uh, might be an intuitive way to go and it'll add more life into the pose we don't have to hit control for any other bones than the torso and the feet bone because those don't actually translate forward in the walk now the feet look a little bit spread out Let's make Man Candy do more of an inline walk, or at least close to inline. So we'll grab this foot and we'll move it on the x axis this time. And I'm also going to hit control. And the reason here is because I want to keep the symmetry, the left right symmetry here, so that they're both um, on this, at the same distance from the middle. And that's why I'm holding control here. because that back foot is going to come forward and hit the, the ground and I just think it would be easier to work with it if it's in the same relative location on the x-axis. I'll move it a little bit more by 0.1 more and now we have an inline walk and different characters might move differently but um, this is starting to look a little bit more natural but we have to really start touching the upper body and the arms a lot before this starts looking good. 
So first of all, let's rotate those arms down. So we click on the upper arm and we'll just rotate and it will key once we do that automatically. And we'll do the same for the other arm. And now let's think about it. Um, in our walk, we'll have the arm that's on the leading foot trailing and vice versa. So the left arm needs to move back in this case since our left foot is forward and we'll move the right arm forward. So our arms are opposing our legs. And a rule of thumb is whenever you animate the arms you should also animate the shoulders. In fact you can actually think that the shoulders are the generators of the motion to some extent. So you actually start thinking of the animation from the shoulder. So in theory I should have moved the shoulders back first. But in any case, we'll rotate the shoulders a little bit to kind of match how we moved the arm motion. And looking in front view, we can think of the character's weight and the angle of his torso. And we'll try to come up with something a bit more lively than this straight line. So maybe we'll, maybe we'll swap the, the, the weight a little bit on the back foot which will push the hip up a little bit on that leg and we'll oppose it in the shoulders so the hip and the shoulders are at slightly opposite angles and I'll just spread out that rotation between the middle bone and the top bone on the back to give the back a nice smoother line and so that's sort of okay a little subtle walk I guess and let's look and see what else we can do so the head and the neck, you don't really want to animate bobbing up and down because then the character looks like a pigeon. But you can decide on a general attitude for the character if his if his like neck is leaning forward and he's looking down depressed, or if his head is jauntily in the air, or in our case, um we'll keep him more or less normal. Um we'll do kind of a boring, more or less normal walk for this tutorial. And you notice that the rotation of the torso, or rather the middle back, doesn't really affect the head and the arms. And that's so that you can pose the arms, the head, and the body more or less independently and be able to tweak them back and forth without worrying too much on the effect they had on each other. And it's really up to the rigor um, how that's set up. And uh, so Man Candy is set up in this way, but not every rigged character may have the same setup. So let's tweak the arms, because we only moved one bone in them so far, and we could look at the hands and their forearms as well as the upper arms. So let's like bend them a little bit, for instance, in the forearm. Just a slight bend on this back one, and maybe a bit more of a bend on the front arm. And let's look at the hands. We could we could even bend those forward or backwards. So let's swing that a little forward and I don't know, maybe swing that maybe a little bit the other direction. And then look in the front view, we can maybe have that swing in a little bit even. That might look a little bit cooler. And maybe this one not so much. And now a nice thing about how the arms are set up is that you have these orange color on the hand bones which means that they're in IK, in targetless IK mode and that means you can pose them like they're an IK chain but they'll still animate in FK and be posable in FK at the same time. So it's just a posing convenience. I can hit G, grab the hand and just tweak the position slightly and do it a lot quicker than if I had to rotate each joint independently to do that. So here's our first pose and, and it looks pretty okay and we'll say that we've made our first contact pose for the walk cycle. Let's save and continue to the rest.